All right, well, we have pretty much gone all the way around the marsh. And so this video is turning, I think, away from one of my normal kind of videos where I just fish and show y'all how I fish. More to a, oh, I just had a hit. I think it's turning more into a type of video that I probably couldn't have shot when I first started doing this YouTube. I just wasn't good enough. But what do you do when you just aren't catching any fish? Especially, especially in this scenario where you found tons and tons of bait, but you're just not having any luck. So we're gonna find out together. What do you do? Now what I'm trying to do right now is what I do often. I wanna hug the leeward side leeward both for wind and sun. So I've got the wind coming on my left shoulder, I've got the sun on my left shoulder. That puts my shadow here and away from the bank. There's one. Oh, that was a trout. That is the story of the day, man. Goodness. I might have to change my hook. It was plenty sharp though. All right, we push on. Okay, well, we have still not beaten the skunk. That sounded like a trout. There's one, finally. What is this? It's getting bigger as it gets closer. Feels kind of drummy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You know, I hear my voice getting raised. You're about to see why. Holy cow! Holy cow! This has got to be a 20 inch flounder. Look at this flounder! Oh my gosh! Spit the hook. These lures do great for flounder, but I I have never seen a flounder this big. Look at this. That is a 20 inch flounder. A 20 inch flounder. I'm gonna put it in the net. I'm not sure if there's a size limit on this. Let me look that up, but my gosh. Well, the size limit, the max, is 27 for these, so I'm absolutely keeping this. I'm not going to keep anything else. We are now fishing for fun. I cannot believe the size of this flounder. Look at this. It's almost as big as my freaking ice chest. Holy cow. All right, it looks like all the cameras are rolling. Y'all, I don't even know what to say. What an absolute beast of a flounder. I have gone all over the marsh, been getting completely skunked, and then we just landed a 20 inch flounder. Whew. Now, you see it bit my tail off first and then it came back for more. That is one thing with these Lost Coast, the tail action is so great. And I've mentioned this in another episode, that's why I end up catching more flounder with this than most lures I throw. But a side effect of that tail action is you get a lot of tail strikes. And I think today, a large amount of the hits we're getting are tail strikes, and that's why we're not setting the hook. All right, well, that was extremely unexpected. You know, I can probably hear and see. The wind has really picked up. But I caught a fish, and so the three cast rules in effect. I think you owe it to yourself whenever you catch a fish to throw in that spot a few more times. Although, the size of that flounder, I highly doubt there's any more. 
over there. That's probably his territory. And I've changed this ecosystem forever, taking him out. <laughs> Man, I, I just, I've never seen a flounder that big. That's easily, easily my personal best flounder. And that is really, to me, the best side effect of fishing with these Lost Coast lures. What was crazy about catching that flounder, I mean, it just didn't feel like anything. It wasn't fighting at all. It's probably not used to that. Be that big, that's, that's a pretty old flounder. It's been around for a while. But it didn't fight at all until I got the net out, and even then it barely fought. Oh, as soon as it hit the water, oh, he got off. Ah. Well, we gotta give it three more casts, huh? As soon as it hit the water. That has been the story of the day, though, man. It has been so hard to set the freaking hook. So sometimes it's hard to tell what the tide's doing, especially when the wind is blowing against the tide. So right now, it looks like all that water's coming this way, but I can tell by the way my boat's floating. It wants to go that way. So that means the tide is still rising. Trout. Nice trout. All right. <laughs> oh, my line broke. <sighs> I cannot hold on to this trout. That trout was 13 on the dot. But now I got to retie. All right, well, still haven't found redfish, but we've found fish. And I'm not opposed to sitting here and catching a bunch of trout and flounder. Although, as much as I love to eat flounder, they are not super fun to catch. <laughs> you can just kind of lay down and die. All right. Recast rules in effect. Having to fight the wind and the current right now. When is that not the case? So we've got a trout and a flounder at this spot after getting skunked all day. And you know, it really just could be that the bite is only just now starting. And it's like that sometimes frustrating as it may be. Yep, yeah, I called it before I got that hook set. It felt like trout. The way they hit is so peculiar. They hit, I would say, like brim. If you ever fish for brim, especially with artificials, they kind of tut, tut tut Almost like they're trying to stun the lure and then eat it. So you get a lot of repeat hits and stuff like that. All right, that was cast number two. Having a retie might have killed the bite. That happens. Now, in this spot, I never know how I'm going to edit. There's a lot of splashing and stuff going kind of deeper in there. And I'm not going to pursue it at all because I've already done that. Well, that's always interesting. Get a, a few bites real quick. But something as simple as just having a retie takes enough time for that school or that feed and frenzy to move on and so we move on as well engaging by what's happening here we're finally catching some fish we got fish number three in the boat not tearing it up by any means but we weren't catching anything until right about now which I think it's about 9 30 let's see 10 o'clock so we've got a couple more hours to fish And I did one thing today that I've been meaning to do for a while. I fished a little bit smarter than I normally do. And what I mean by that is I went out and now I'm going in instead of starting in going out. 
wind and sun are right on my back so hopefully we come across some some reds there he is <laughs> You can even sight fish trout. <laughs> no, these are not keeper trout, but they're still fun. <laughs> and they're feisty. Now, like I said, you can even sight fish trout. I don't know how much that'll come across on camera, but I saw some feeding activity and threw right into it. I mean, that's really it. And there's a d definite difference between seeing bait fish and seeing feeding activity hard to explain this is one of those things I've just kind of built up the knowledge over time but the basic idea is feeding activity the bait fish are jumping out of the water zigzagging stuff like that bait fish just hanging out they're kind of darting everything's in a straight line not very evasive boy this looks pretty right here though I, I have to go stick the boat into that This is just prime sight fish zone. It's calm. Water's decently clear, clear enough. And these little duck ponds at high tide, man. Normally, normally it's money. We are not having a normal day. That was not a gar. What is that? didn't get that lure in front of it. Where did it go? Now I let the wind just kind of blow me back. Just to keep some distance between me and that fish, but I have no idea where it went. There it is. There it is. <laughs> oh, yes. He's still on. He's still on. He just saw me. <laughs> oh, listen to that. Listen to that. Well. Oh boy. I liked you better fish when you were running to the open part. I think it's I think it's spent now. No, nope, never mind. <laughs> and these things are so strong. Multi spotter. It's a male. I can hear it drumming from here. Got a huge spot. Well, I definitely got down prematurely. Got him. All right. Whew. What a beautiful fish. Look at this spot. And this is what I came out here for, y'all. <laughs> See if I can get a better shot. <laughs> look at this fish. And look at that gigantic spot. Now I'm not gonna keep it, it's too big. 25 incher love it love it love it 
Let's let it go. All right. That was awesome. That was awesome. That was worth the trip and the grind and the struggle. Whew. Now, if y'all are looking for Father's Day gift ideas, get you one of these. I'm not sponsored by them at all. By far the best at holding ice. The ice in that bottle was put in there yesterday. In fact, that bottle keeps water so cold, I bring another water bottle with no ice. Because if I drink water that's too cold, especially when it's super hot in the summer, it ruins my voice. So I'll put a little link to that in the description. I always put a link to everything I fish with and use. And y'all let me know. Do y'all want some like Father's Day gift ideas? Because I've got a ton of stuff that I use that I've gained over the years of doing this channel and just fishing a lot in general. Happy to do a little episode. Y'all can just show to your wives or partners. Say, yo, give me one of these. Water is surprisingly deep. There's one. Oh, he got off. Alright, we are in the last area that I'm going to try. I really wish I had a few more hours to give because I do think the bite is really only just kind of starting. But it is what it is. Alright, I'm going to go with this TKO shrimp because I just saw that shrimp popping. Don't know if this is the right color. I wanted it on a popping cork, but I didn't have that rigged already. Oh, there's one. Boy, he hit it hard too. Not sure what it is yet. Gotta be a red. Perfect size red too. Well, maybe not perfect. He's a rat. Fun as heck on this light tackle, man. <laughs> now we're gonna measure him. If he keeps, I think I'm gonna keep. Oh, he got off. Never mind. Doesn't matter. <laughs> so let me go over why I lost that fish. This is basically an extra light saltwater rod, and that fish just has all the leverage. <laughs> Good for him, though. Good for him. So, as I've been saying, this will be the last spot. I'll probably cut out all the time between the last time I said that and that time. Just keep the episode moving. But the reason I made a switch to this shrimp as I've been seeing shrimp jumping around. And sure enough, I mean, that redfish absolutely tattooed it. He hit it hard. Man, did you hear the shaking from that trout? Man, he got the whole lure. I've not been able to hold on to these guys all day. All right, another little trout. Now, I swear, I swear, I caught some big trout inside just a week ago. <laughs> but honestly, we should be catching those little dinks. That's what, in terms of trout, that's what it should be right now. Just so happened that I caught some big ones inside last week and I'm trying to recreate that magic but 
Switching to the shrimp, I won't say the bite really has picked up, but the hits I'm getting are way, way better. Like clear, no doubters. And that trout sounded like phone vibrating. He was shaking so hard. Still haven't seen a red though. Oh, boy, that trout came in. Oh, walloped it on a straight retrieve. And that's what I mean. The hits are no doubters. There it is. <laughs> Look at that little bitty trout. <clears throat> All right, this is what we should be finding. And this is probably the feeding activity that we saw. All right, y'all. I just realized my chest cam wasn't recording, so I don't even know what's the last fish that you guys will see. That's how it goes sometimes, and that's how today really went. You know, I had this big plan of going somewhere I've never been before, which is always going to make it a little bit more difficult to find fish. And it was. I had to bounce around, and that's the key. When you're getting skunked, just keep moving. Keep moving, keep moving, keep grinding. Now, I never did see an actual redfish. We saw one feeding, we were able to land it. I saw a zero just swimming around, and that's kind of crazy to me. That tells me one thing. They moved, and I'm going to have to find them. So, I hope y'all come back for the next episode, because that's when I will, I hope. Until next time, y'all like and subscribe. I'll catch you later.